It is an age of magic and wonder. 5,000 years ago, so many things were new. Bronze, seagoing ships, musical instruments, and wine. Whatever this tiny marble man may be celebrating, he surely is full of wonder at the newly found magic of the great. And he himself is magical, a treasured possession made to order to accompany his owner into the grave. Classical Greece, the Greece of the Parthenon of Plato and Aristotle, the Greece where democracy was born and the arts perfected 2,500 years ago. Go back 2,500 years before this, past the age of Homeric heroes, beyond the great Minoan Empire of Crete. Back as far in time from the classical age as Plato and Aristotle are from our own. To an era before written language. To the works of anonymous sculptors in their strikingly modern vision of the human form. To the very birth of Greek art in the Cyclades. The Cyclades, a cluster of islands in the middle of the Aegean Sea. They are, in fact, the uneven crests of submerged mountains, from volcanic theater in the south to the granite peaks of Andros in the north. Hundreds of islands lie between them. Only a few are habitable. For 4,000 years, they were dominated by powerful intruders from Crete, the mainland, and beyond. The original Cycladic culture was buried and forgotten. Forgotten, that is, until the last century, when farmers working their fields unearthed a wealth of curious objects, most of them clustered in cramped graves. What had been uncovered was the first evidence in modern times that an independent, vigorous culture had taken root in these islands 5,000 years ago. The graves yielded an assortment of tools and implements of bronze and obsidian, jewelry, vessels of marble and clay, Many of them are Tom Thumbs. Others are two or three feet in length. A few are life-size. These containers held pigment for decorating the statues, the dead and perhaps the living. In fact, several figures 
have remnants of color representing face painting or tattooing. Originally, this face would have looked like this. Who were these people who dreamt of another life? An after image of their own. We may never know for certain. Their humble homes and towns have all but vanished. They left no written record, no oral tradition. About 2,000 years before Christ, their culture simply disappeared. But only 500 years later, in the island of Thera, something extraordinary happened that may point the way back to the Cyclades of these mysterious people. Like some of its neighbors, Thera is the tip of an active volcano. About 1500 BC, the volcano exploded, blasting away more than half the island, burying what was left under millions of tons of ash and lava. Akrotiri, a city of 30,000 people, was a sophisticated colony of the Minoan Empire of Crete. Its people prospered as seafarers, traders, artisans. Warned by rumblings of the volcano, they fled with their most valuable possessions, but they left behind haunting relics of their daily life. Especially striking is the layout of these streets, the design of the houses, ashen ghosts of present-day Cycladic villages, echoes crossing over 3,500 years. And yet, not so many hundred years before the cataclysm that buried Akrotiri, the men who carved the little Cycladic figures were living on these islands. In fact, when we look at Akrotiri and its frescoes, we see so many things that have remained constant in the Cyclades for 5,000 years. Wildflowers still cover the fields of Thera. Potters still work the clay, much as their forefathers did. Long before Akrotiri was built, the vine was cultivated, the grapes fermented, and drunk. Yarn, spun to be woven into garments of wool, bronze pins, 5,000 years old, fastening garments, horned animals, so important to the people of the islands, both then and now. Fishing has always been vital to survival in these islands. And it is the sea that has been the great constant. Ever since ships and sailors transformed it from a dividing to a uniting medium. A limitless highway rather than a hostile barrier. This boat incised on a Cycladic grave object of the 3rd millennium BC, depicts one of the first seagoing vessels ever built. Its successors led directly to the great galleys which dominated the Mediterranean until the decline of Venice. These were the distant cousins of the caravels of Christopher Columbus. It was such far-ranging ships that made it possible for Cycladic culture to emerge and to survive for a thousand years. For without them, the Cicladians would have been marooned and starving on their separate sea-girt hilltops. 
And on this piece from a cycladic grave, the sea and all that it represents is here, a mariner's world in miniature. Vestigial legs suggest the human form. The vessel depicts a microcosm of life on the sea, like a child in its womb. The function of these objects is unknown, but again, the imagery is clear, the sea. So universal was the use of wave patterns that some are stamped on the clay rather than drawn by hand. The sea governed their lives, determined their survival, flooded their imagination. Large or small, craggy or hospitable, most of the sick of these possess at least one source of wealth. Marble. Quarried from hillsides on Naxos and Tharos, it is still worth today. Gouged and chipped by the elements, it was polished by the incessant stroking of the wave. Its natural beauty enhanced in a way that it must have caught the eye of the early inhabitants. These pebbles and these similarly shaped figures were buried together in the same grave. In the hands of a master craftsman of the third millennium BC, cycladic marble became translucent. Here, after drilling holes into the center, he lifted out the inside like the core of a stone apple and with infinite care ground down the sides until the light shone through. But the most striking achievement of these artists was their ability to see the human body in its essential form. The proportions seem to have followed a set pattern. In the case of folded arm figures carved towards the middle of the third millennium BC, four parts. At the same time as the lifelike figures, another type was made. These were shorthand versions of the message carried by their fully formed relations. At the beginning of the third millennium, the division was into three. Once again, proportions correspond. Anatomy is truncated. The effect? A violin shape, a compact visual metaphor. Picasso collected these figures, of which he said, they are magical objects, better than Bancusi. Nobody ever made an object strip that bare. Forms, patterns, repeated over hundreds of years. And yet the works of individual sculptors can be recognized such as this, by the so-called Gulandris master. Or these two figures, clearly carved by another hand. But his works do not express a personal vision. Rather, he served the needs of his community, a ritual purpose. But what? From the side, many of the figures are no thicker than a slice of bread. Were they meant to be viewed lying on their backs, arms folded as if in sleep? Companions for the afterlife? Dead men's concubines? Were they images of fertility, buried with great chieftains in the hopes that more of their heroic kind would spring from the earth? Did they represent divinities watching over dramatic turning points in a person's life?
Whatever their purpose, the statues and other objects buried with them speak of a people whose delight in sensuous things could not be restrained, even in the presence of death. And then, as inexplicably as it arose, this culture faded. The figures became a sketchy memory of their original forms. The islands were taken over by outsiders. The early culture obliterated. But not completely. Cyclatic villages retain a curious sculptural quality. A resonance of their art of long ago. years for others to rediscover this kind of art, stripped bare of superfluities. Picasso himself acknowledged a debt to it. He said, there was once a little man in the Cyclades. He thought he was making the great goddess. What he made was not a god, but a piece of sculpture. Nothing is left of his life, nothing is left of his kind of gods. But this is left because he wanted to make a piece of sculpture, a kind of magic power. 